What's up guys? In this set of videos I'm going to show you how to program Connect4 in Python. By the end of these videos we'll have built something that looks like this. It's a simple two-player Connect4 game with graphics. I think this is a really good exercise for your beginner to intermediate level Python programmers who want to build their skills. I'll just finish up a game real quick just so you can see how this fully works. As you can see, I have a diagonal and it says player one wins. Cool. All right, so more specifically in this first video, we're gonna do something a little bit simpler and then build up to that graphic-based Connect4 game. So by the end of this specific video, you'll have something that looks like this. It's a command line Connect4 game where you actually manually type in numbers to drop your pieces. So you see the one there, the two, etc. All right, so let's start building that. Just quickly, I wanna mention that I'll be programming in Python 3 and then using Sublime Text 2 as my editor. I posted a link to a video on how to set up these things in the description. So one of the first questions I asked myself when I was writing this game is, what is the best way to represent the board? So if I drag in a Connect 4 board real quick, you can see that it is six rows by seven columns. And to me, this looks like the perfect structure to represent as a matrix in Python. So that's what we'll do. So we'll define a function called create board and that's not going to accept any inputs. And then we're going to make a, f a matrix of all zeros with the dimension 6 by 7. And to help us do this, we're going to import a package called NumPy. And if you haven't already installed this, you can open up a terminal window and just type in pip install NumPy. And as you can see, I already have it. So we're going to use this as follows. We're going to say board equals NumPy.zeros. And that's going to make a matrix of all zeros which is good for our initial state, and then the dimension six rows by seven columns. Cool, and then we just need to return that board. And we can test to make sure that worked by doing the following, create board, and then print board. And as you can see, if I run, oh no, what happened? As you can see, if I run that, um, we, we do in fact have this six by seven matrix of all zeros, so that looks good. We can begin writing the main game loop now. So we're gonna write a loop that says while not game over. And so our loop is gonna be running as long as this game over variable is false. And the only way it becomes true is if someone has a four in a row. So we need to initialize the game over to be false to begin with, equals false. And the only way that's gonna switch to true is if someone got a four in a row. So now we're gonna need to, we're also gonna wanna real quick make our board initialize before we start the game just so we have something to put pieces into so we have our board we have our game over variable and now we're going to want to be able to ask the player one input and then we're also going to want to eventually be able to ask uh, ask for player two input so this kind of leads us to the problem of, oh, how do we differentiate between whether it's player one or player two's turn? So we're also gonna define another variable up here called turn, and that's just gonna initialize to zero. So what we're gonna say is, if turn equals equals zero, then we're gonna wanna ask for player one input. All right, so in Python, there's a function, a built-in function called input. As you can see, it highlights blue for me. So we're gonna say, selection equals input and then we're going to say player one make your selection so this is what the player one's going to see and then the way we're going to initialize this game is we're going to just say they can type in between zero and six so this is what the player one should see so if i build this you see we run into this error so this is because um, Sublime Text doesn't accept this input function. So my workaround for this was I installed a package in Sublime called Sublime REPL. I'll put a link in the description on how to install this, and I can run the input function through that. So now you can see player one, make your selection three. And it doesn't do anything with that input right now, but you can see that it's asking me that, and I can type in and hit enter. All right, cool. So. We also just want to make sure that it saves our selection properly. So we're going to print selection 
And I also just want to see, you know, if I type in a number, does it actually give me the number or does it give me a string that represents the number? So I'm going to also print in type of selection. I just want to see what we're getting. So I'm going to run that again. And as you can see, error again. But we're going to go to Splime REPL. And the link is in the description, as I just said. Run current file. So two. And as you can see, it gets two, but it says it's a string. So we're going to want to make sure that it's actually a integer. So we can just surround this with int input. And this should work. So let's see. Run that again. And you can also run this through the command line. So if you run this in your terminal, go to the, the directory that the file is in and type in Python and then file name, it will also run it just as I'm running it in this Sublime REPL. Uh, player one, make your selection three. Cool. And now you see it says three and it says the class of that is an int. So that looks good to me. So now we can save some sort of selection from the user. And you can also um, edit this so that it um, requires you to make a specific num type in a specific number but we'll just leave it as like we'll imagine our players are following the directions right now all right cool we have that and then we're also going to want to be able to ask for player two's input so that's going to happen else otherwise so if return is not equal to zero um, then we want to ask for player two input so selection equals we'll just copy this from above And we'll just have to change this to say player two make your selection. All right. Cool. And now at the end of the turn, no matter whose turn it is, we're going to want to increase um, our turn by one. So turn plus e or plus equals one. So I'll make it increment it by one. And then we're also what we're going to also want to do is we're going to just make this odd even. So we're going to use mod division, so it's going to be turn mod two, turn equals turn mod two. And this is just basically making it go uh, take the remainder of whatever our turn is divided by two. So this is just going to alternate it between zero and one. So it will alternate between player one's turn and player two's turn. So let's just see if this works properly. So we're going to run this build python current file player one make your selection two player two make your selection four player one make your selection two oh that looks good it's alternating between our player one and our player two cool okay and now we're going to want to start building our actual functionality we're going to want to be able to make this selection right here actually drop a piece into our board so i'm going to find another function up here called definition drop piece and we might define a couple functions here. We'll maybe have a little drop piece, and then we'll just do pass for now. And maybe we'll also have like is valid location. So that will check whatever number that the player typed in. We'll check to see if that's a valid location. We'll also define a function called get next open row. And how all these functions are going to work together is as follows. So it all begins with the player making a selection. The 0 to 6 here represents the column that they want to drop their piece in. So maybe a more appropriate title for this would be col representing column. col. Next we're going to take this column and the current board we have and pass it into this is valid location function. So board column. And to visualize how we can check to see if the column they selected is a valid location, we will print out the board real quick. So as you can see, imagine this is the zeroth row, this is the first row, second row, all the way up to the fifth row here. And then this is the zeroth column, first column, second column, etc. We're starting at zero as our first index. So if we wanted to check if the column that the user selected, let's just assume that the user always types in a valid number 0 to 6. If we wanted to check to see if it's valid, all we need to do is make sure that this top row for that specific column is not been filled. So let's imagine that we're putting 1's in for player 1 going and 2's in for player 2 going. So if this top row is still 0 for the specific column we selected, 
then we know that it's okay for us to drop a piece in that row or in that column. It hasn't been filled all the way to the top. So to do that, so this is the fifth row. So all I'm going to do is just check to see whether or not the position at the fifth row and let's say, you know, whatever column we select is zero. And if it is, that means the column is still free. If it's not, then that's not a valid location. We'll have to have the user try something else. So to do that, let's just do board. So we're going to return board. And then the, the row is five. And the column is whatever the user selected. So here. So and we're going to make sure that's equal equal zero. So if that's true, then we're good to we're good to let them drop the piece there. If that's not true, then that means the column has been filled up all the way. And one thing I'll note that we'll probably change in a future video is that it's kind of getting messy in my code a little bit with just throwing these random numbers here all the way, all over the place. In programming, this is called magic numbers. You kind of don't know where they come from. So I'll clean those up in uh, some of the future videos in this series. So return board five column equals equals zero. And that is just checking to make sure that that column has an empty slot. Okay, so now that we've gotten the valid location, let's get the next open row in that column. So if we think back to our board, that's just checking to see when we drop it in, let's say, the zeroth column here on the, the left, it's checking to see which row of these it, the piece will fall on. So to do this, we're going to write a quick little loop. So we're going to do for and we're going to also have to pass in the board and the column into this one. So the loop we're going to write here is for r and range and I'm actually going to start uh, getting rid of some of these magic numbers. So I'm going to initialize a global variable called row count and often globals are capitalized just to show that uh, or static variables that don't change are capitalized just to show that they're a non-changing variable. So the number of rows we have is six and the number of columns we have is seven. So I'm going to do for R, so for row in range, so the number of rows we have, so row count. And we're going to check the board position. We're going to see if board R position, or so the column, equals equals zero, then we want to return that row. So basically, if the row is equal to zero, so imagine we're filling this whole board up with ones and twos. If the slot is still zero, that means it's empty still. So we're going to return the first instance that it's empty. So this R is going to count from zero to uh, row count minus one. And we're going to return that first case where it equals zero. Okay, so now we got the next open row. And then finally, what we're going to want to do is drop the piece. So this is going to take in the board, the row, and the column. And then we'll also add something. We'll just call it the piece. So whether it's player one or two going. So all this is going to do is go board, row, column equals equals piece. So we're going to make it fill in the board with whatever piece that the player just dropped. So let's put this all together in our loop. So first we got the column. Now we're going to check um, if is valid location of the board in the column. And then we can start getting the next empty row. So row equals get next open row. And that takes in the board and column as well. So Get next input in row, board, column, and then we're going to finally drop piece. And we're going to take in the board, the row, the column, and then for player one, the piece is just the one. And we're going to copy this in to player two as well, because player one and player two, the functionality of what they're doing is the same, but we'll just have to change the piece here to two. So now and then finally, we're probably after the player goes, we'll probably want to print out the board. So we'll print the board here. 
and let's see what happens now. So tools, build, oh shoot, sorry, Sublime RPL, Python, run current file. So player one selection. We're gonna have to drop our piece right in the middle. So that's zero, one, two, three. This is the third column, so three. Oh, what happened? Why did it not fill in? Let's figure out what exactly went wrong there. So should have updated the board, but for some reason it did not. Um, so let's see. Okay, I see what I did wrong here. So I accidentally put in two equal sign here, and what we're really trying to do is an assignment. We're not trying to set see if the board row column position is equal to that. So I didn't assign it. So now it should work. So we'll rerun this. So tools, sublime RPL, Python, run current file. Player one, make your selection. We'll say go to the middle, three. Player two, make your selection. We'll do three as well. Player one, make your selection. And as you can see, one issue we're having right now is that the pieces are starting at the top and going downwards. And so the reason for this is our convention was to say that this was the zero, zero index, but in the actual numpy, they represent this right here as the zero, zero index. So I'm just gonna add an additional function real quick called print board. And all that's gonna do is change the orientation so that what we're seeing is actually the, the flipped over the way we're expecting to see a connect four board kind of be building from bottom up. So print board, and we just need to pass in the board. And all we're gonna do is there's a command in numpy. So the command is, let me just remember it. It is np.flip. We're gonna do board, and then you have to flip it over. You have to specify the axis, so the zero is the axis. So I'm gonna flip the board over the x-axis. So that should get it upside, the, the right side up again. So instead of doing uh, print board here, we're gonna now call our new print function. So print board, and then board. And we can also do that down here if we want to. Print, uh, it doesn't matter I guess to start, but print board, whatever. Okay, now let's run it again. Tools, Sublime RPL, Python, run current file. Player one, make your selection. Three, three, three. And as you can see now, it's building up from with ones and twos, um, just how we expect. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do for this video. In the next video, I'm going to kind of build in the functionality of actually checking for wins with these ones and twos. And then in the next video, probably after that, we're gonna actually add the graphics. So make sure you stick tuned for those videos. All right, thanks for watching this one, guys. See you in a bit.